What's up guys, it's Danta. So in today's video, we are going to the Shadowlands. Now Shadowlands gave a lot of us nightmares because of how bad it was, but it did bring us some cool things, even though we all like to say Shadowlands bad. Now one of those cool things was Castle Nevria, and that's where we will be going to solo the glory of the Nevria Raider achievement. Now when you complete this achievement, you will be rewarded with the Ramparts creature mount. Now to make it yourself a lot easier, you want to have a mage for the achievement called Private Stock, a tank for the Feed the Beast achievement, and a class that can heal for the Burning Bright achievement. Preferably a Paladin. Now I did every achievement except for the Private Stock one on my 448 Paladin, the Private Stock achievement I did on my 425 Frost Mage. Even though my characters are geared pretty badly, I was still able to solo every achievement easily. But keep in mind that the higher your item level is, the easier every achievement becomes. Now if you have a class that can heal a little, I would highly recommend using that one as well because you are bound to take some damage. Lastly, there is just one more thing that you might want to get and that's the add-on instance achievement tracker. Now with all of that covered, let's dive into these achievements. So for the first achievement, Blind as a Bat, we have to kill Shriekwing after she kills six invisible mobs. Now this achievement is pretty easy to do. When you enter the boss room, you will see these pebbles I guess, laying on the ground. Now there are six of them scattered around the edge of the room. What you want to do is you want to pull the boss on top of one of those pebbles and just slowly DPS her. At some point she will start casting echolocation, which will leave a blood puddle on the ground. If she casts echolocation while you are standing on top of one of those pebbles, she will kill the invisible mob and you will see that it's dead body appeared on the ground. Basically keep doing that until six of those invisible mobs have been killed. After that, you can kill the boss and you will get your achievement. For the taking care of business achievement, our objective is to defeat Huntsman Altamore after having walked his three hounds around the room. Now here is what you want to do. You want to start the fight and you want to walk the first dog around the room while hugging the wall. After you've ran a full circle around the room while the dog was following you, Instance Achievement Tracker will let you know. Now you can also just track the achievement manually if you don't want to use any add-ons. Now once you've walked the first pet around the room, you can kill it. Basically apply the same strategy for the second and third pet. Now while you are walking the third hound, you might want to use some cooldowns to reduce the damage that you will get. Now, after all three dogs have been walked and dealt with, you can take down Huntsman Altimore and when he's dead, you will get your achievement. Then we have the Feed the Beast achievement, for which we are going to need a tank. Now if you have a decently geared warrior tank, I would highly recommend doing this achievement with that one. So what you have to do is kill the Hungering Destroyer after draining all six of the anima canisters. Now these canisters are scattered around the room, to have the boss drain them, you want to position yourself in front of the canister. After a while, the boss will cast Volatile Ejection. If you've positioned yourself correctly, it will hit one of those canisters. When it hits the canister, it will be drained. That's what you have to do until all six canisters have been drained. Now the only thing that kinda sucks here is that you can't heal yourself during this fight. So to survive, you want to be on a tank that can generate damage absorption shields like a warrior with ignore pain. I first tried it on my 418 protection warrior, but I died at the fourth canister because my item level was pretty low. <laughs> but after that, I went on my paladin and I was able to do it without any issues at all. Now I used a talent build, which was mainly focused on damage absorption. So what you want to do is very simple. You want to engage the boss and align yourself with a canister. You want to use your defensive abilities or continuously just use Ignore Pain if you are on a warrior. After a while, the boss will cast Volatile Ejection and it will hit the canister that's behind you. Whenever it does, you can move on to the next one. Basically repeat this process for each canister. Once all six are drained, you can kill the boss and you will see your achievement pop up. For the achievement, I don't know what I expected. We need to have a specific pet. Now the pet that you need is the Son of Animus, which you can get from either the auction house or the Throne of Thunder. Now what you have to do here is very simple. You want to summon the pet and you want to pull the boss. After 4 minutes the pet will spawn a Dark Animus. You have to kill the Dark Animus and after that the boss to get the achievement. That's it. Burning Bright is the next one that we have to do. Now to earn this achievement we need to ignite all 4 braziers in the room before finishing the Keltas encounter. Now in each corner of the boss room you will find a brazier. They can only get ignited by the boss its abilities in phase 2. Now one of the abilities 
the boss needs to cast on the brazier is called Blazing Surge. However, I'm uncertain if this is cast on targets other than tanks in normal mode, so just keep that in mind. Now I did this on my Protection Paladin, because to reach phase 2, you are going to need a class that can cast some healing spells. So what you want to do is you want to start the fight by clearing the enemies in the room. When the enemies are dead, you want to start healing Kel'Thas. Eventually, you will come down. When Kel is down on the ground, you want to move to the upper left brazier and just stand in front of it until Kel lights it up. After that, you want to move clockwise to the other brazier. Basically do the same thing here. Now when the second bonfire is lit, you want to move on to the next one. To light up the third brazier, you have to kill the phoenix on top of it. When the third brazier is lit, you want to move on to the last one, stand in front of it and let Kel light that one up as well. With all four braziers lit, you just want to finish the encounter and you will get your achievement. Next up we have Private Stock. Now if you want to make this achievement very easy, you want to come here with a mage. I did this with my Frost Mage because I felt like Frost just gave me better survivability than the other two specs. So, how does this achievement work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Before pulling the boss, you need to click on three loose animas just outside the boss room. Clicking the anima will give you a buff, Meltraxis anima, Ardenwield anima, or Maul anima. Now around 15 seconds after pulling the boss, your Meldraxxus anima buff will be stolen and teleported into the room. When that happens, there will be a big swirly on the ground where you must stand on with the anima to deposit it. However, when you pick up the anima, you will get permanently stunned until you deposit it. Now the easiest way to deal with this is by using the mage its ability Alter Time. You want to stand on top of the deposit point, use Alter Time, walk over towards the anima orb, click on it and wait. After a couple of seconds, Alter Time will teleport you back to the swirly and you will automatically deposit the anima. It's that simple. What you want to do next is you want to reduce the boss's HP to 70% and to do the same thing for the Ardenwield anima. When you've deposited the Ardenwield anima, you want to reduce the boss's HP to 40% and to do the same thing for the Maul anima. Once all three animas are deposited, you want to kill the boss and you will get your achievement. Now there are probably also other classes that can do this, like for example a warrior with heroic leap or any other class actually with some kind of movement ability. But if you want to make it yourself as easy as possible, then you just want to come here with a mage. For the next achievement, poor decision making, we have to click on four waiters that will spawn in the boss room. You want to start the fight as usual, DPS the bosses down slowly, and meanwhile you want to keep an eye out for these waiters. Now when they spawn, they will stand still for around 20 seconds, so you have 20 seconds to run over to them and click on them. After you've clicked on four waiters, you can kill the boss and that's all you have to do. It's a very simple achievement. So now it's time for Dirt Flap's revenge. Now to get this achievement we have to make the boss destroy four pillars in a certain order. You want to begin by entering the boss room. Then you want to take the door to the right and proceed down the hallway. Here you will find an imp named Dirt Flap. When you talk to the imp you have to follow him back to the boss room. When you enter the boss room the imp will sit on top of one of the four pillars. You need to make sure that the boss destroys the pillar on which the imp is sitting. You have to do that four times. So what you want to do is you want to pull the boss and tank him in a corner that's near the pillar that he needs to destroy. After he casts his second destructive stomp, you want to run behind the pillar that the imp is sitting on. Eventually the boss will start charging at you and whenever he hits the pillar, he will destroy it. Now whenever the pillar is destroyed, the imp will go to another pillar. And basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that the boss destroys that one next. Keep doing that until all four pillars have been destroyed. Once the final pillar gets destroyed, you can kill the boss and you will see your achievement pop up. Then we have Feed Me Say More, I guess. I have no idea how to pronounce this, but um, this is another easy achievement. Just before entering the boss room, you will see a flower that you can pick up. Now when you pick up the flower, you will get the Wilted Sanguine Roses buff. What you want to do now is start the fight. At some point during the encounter, the boss will get a shield and you will see these red anima orbs spawn around the room. You have to pick up enough anima and bring it to Renathal to push the boss into the next phase. Now whenever you pick up one anima, your Wilted Sanguine Roses buff will turn into a Blooming Sanguine Roses buff. All you have to do now is just finish the encounter. When the boss dies, you will get your achievement. 
Now, if you are doing this achievement with more than one person, you have to make sure that everyone in the party has the blooming Sanguine Roses buff before killing the boss. Alright guys, so now it's time for the last achievement, Clear Conscience. For this achievement, everyone in the raid needs to get rid of their Burden of Sin debuff before the boss is going to cast March of the Penitent. Now, it's actually very easy to do. When you pull the boss, you will gain 4 Burden of Sin stacks immediately. You want to wait till Denefrius casts Cleansing Pain 4 times on you. Every time he casts that on you, one Burden of Sin stack will be removed. When all Burden of Sin stacks have been removed, you want to push Denefrius to 70% HP. When he's at 70% HP, he will go to the middle of the room and you have to follow him. After you drop down, you just want to stay alive and zerg down Denefrius. After that, you will get your achievement. Well guys, that's how you solo the Glory of the Navria Raider achievement. Now, since I've done almost every Glory achievement that there is, I'm starting to think about what kind of videos I could make next. And what I was thinking about was starting a What If video series where I'll just tell a story about, for example, what if Taranda chose Illidan instead of the Sleepy Owlman? Or what if Deathwing actually succeeded? Like these are just some kind of ideas, but I think that these kind of videos could actually be a lot of fun to watch. Now, if you have something that you would like me to try, just let me know in the comment section below because I'm curious about what you guys would like to see. I hope that this video was helpful for some of you and that you've liked the video. If you did and you want to see more content like this, then please consider subscribing. And with that being said, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.